Good afternoon, we're on the Canty High Way. We've just started the route, uh, left the village of Wye and up a damn great hill. There was a clue when it said White Hill, but it should have said Long White Hill. So with us, we've got Ian. Hello. Colin. Hi. And down here somewhere, ah, oh, Wendy. <laughs> Gonna take our time, have a look at what's around, talk about a bit of the history and you can come with us. Three of us are riding gravel bikes today and Colin was looking at getting a gravel bike but we said well why don't you bring your mountain bike and so far I think Colin's on the right mount. We've had a bit of banter about the name of the route now I insist it's Cantii because at school I learnt about the Cantii tribe who were an Iron Age tribe in this area and according to the Romans they were very very civilised. Things got a little less civilised when they met Boudicca and her lot further north. Now I shouldn't complain too much about them changing the name to Canti because this tribe were actually called the Cantiarchi. That's what they called themselves but the Romans came along and they called them the Cantii. And the reason it's I on the end is because when there's a double I in Latin, you pronounce it as an I, not as the E sound of I. So canti I. And it's a bit, I guess, like those plants where a plant's named after something and they call it Davidii or something like that. But whatever we decide to call it, we're going to have a good time over the next few days. Hopefully the weather's set fine. Today it's really hot. It's about 30 degrees. Tonight we're heading to Canterbury. We left the village of Wye where we've parked up and uh, I think it's about nine miles to Canterbury. It's not very far at all, uh, but it's 30 degrees today. So I think it's uh, just as well that we're riding in later afternoon and through these lovely trees and we've only got nine miles to go. Otherwise, I think it would be quite unbearable. Now you notice we're not very laden down today on our bikes because Terry, Wendy's husband, has very kindly offered to drive our kit between hotels. He has some friends here in Kent, so he's going to make a visit to them and ferry our bags and stay with us in the evenings. And for this evening we're heading to Canterbury. We're booked into the Premier Inn and tomorrow's going to be quite coastal. So looking forward to that, the weather's looking good. Well, we've left Canterbury behind. It took us a little while to get out of the city. Couldn't quite work out where we were going, but we rode along the city walls for a bit, which was really nice. Then up through the campus of the university. And now we're out the other side and we're on some proper trails. We're heading for Whitstable and that's going to be our second breakfast. None of us had very much this morning, so we're going to have a proper breakfast in Whitstable by the sea.
Are we right, team? Yeah. Really good. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Great, isn't it? We've stopped here. At, this is Reculver Bay. So you can see Reculver Castle over there with its scaffolding. We probably need scaffolding when we're that age. But Reculver Beach is famous for the dam busters actually practicing the release of their bombs. Now, as Mike Ainsworth told us on the dam busters ride, they never actually released bombs on the reservoirs that they practiced on. But of course, they did release their bombs here. Well, we've overnighted in Sandwich. We stayed at a pub called The New Inn. And they actually let us take the bikes inside, which was quite difficult because the stairs were very narrow. But it was either that or leave them locked up outside, which we didn't fancy. Uh, New Inn itself, yeah, rooms, rooms are okay. My shower was awful. It's above a pub, so you won't get an early night. But food was good and the beer was good so we're now on our second full day and at the moment we're heading to dover and we've got some big climbs coming up today big for us anyway this part of the course goes through golf course and i think we're in the bunker it's really really sandy so we're pushing except for colin of course on his mountain bike we did read some notes that said this track was sandy but we could have gone along the road. We've seen lots of cyclists going along the road. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should have done the same.
Good morning, it's uh, our final day today and we're leaving New Romney where we stayed overnight on the edge of the Romney Marshes. Stayed at the Lord Howie Hotel. Breakfast was really good, so that set us up for the day. So we're now just heading back to the seafront and it looks like we're gonna have a fairly long interwind section. The hotel didn't have any food on last night, so we had a wander. Took us a while to find somewhere, but we stopped at the plow for dinner and it was superb. So if you're this way, New Romney, the plow was excellent. Take a run. You can. <laughs> Look, come on. Get her arms. Hang on, because that's quite rough. Can you do it? Ready? Yeah. Oh. I've got to pull me over. <laughs> Just lift her. Oh, that's a good idea. God, I bet it. What have you been eating? Thank you. This is like a baby elephant. Why you don't say that to a lady? Well, I'm going to say it to Wendy, though. What have you been eating? Like an elephant. Baby elephant. We've just reached uh, Camber Sands and we've stopped for a coffee at this place, the Camber Landing, which is on the right as you come through. And uh, we've all had almond croissant. How was the almond croissant? Yeah. Just what we needed. Just what we needed. So it's worth a stop. We're just heading through Ashford as we speak. So we've only got about, uh, I think, six and a half miles to go now of our three and a half day adventure. So what do you reckon, Wendy? What did you think to the It's been route? challenging. I think it's the most challenging ride I've ever done. Loved yeah. it. A lot of wows, a lot of amazing sights, but it's not easy. No, it's certainly not it's not for the faint-hearted is it if you if no. you're going to do the whole route parts of it would be okay i think from the point of view of route design there were a couple of areas here that frankly shouldn't have been on the route there was that part out of sandwich that went across the golf course that was just sand Thanks, and you just couldn't ride in it could you because no. it was deep sand yet no. there was there was a road next to it that was pretty quiet we'd have been better on that yes yeah. and in defense some people had mentioned it but they should yeah. make it the formal route shouldn't yeah they? exactly well done ashford on a super cycle highway through it's really good isn't it very impressed it's a real cycling friendly city or town is it town or town, town i suppose yeah mm -hmm really good isn't it yeah 
So we're close on 150 miles over this three and a half day. It's been quite hard. Yeah. And lots of on and off and different tracks and... Been a bit of everything. Really a lot of variety. Quite side. <laughs> <laughs> now one of the questions that has come up is from uh, our American viewer with the trike who has said, how has your bike fit been? left here i think it's made a huge difference do in you? this ride yeah really? i really do because at thought. first you didn't seem too I sure, wasn't sure no. but you had to get used to it but i think i've had less knee problems i'm not saying my knees haven't hurt at some stage no. but less certainly Good. the braking has been much easier yeah um yeah it's just felt more comfortable so lily there made the point that she'd only made minor adjustments so yeah, it just yeah. shows that those minor adjustments can make all the difference definitely yeah no they've really helped so ian have you enjoyed this trip i have it's been brilliant yeah. it's been tough in places but yeah thoroughly enjoyable yeah, yeah. not for the faint-hearted certainly not is it no no but, uh, yeah. I was saying it surprised me how long it took us to manage some of the legs. You yeah, know. that's right. It's like today, we've, we're dominantly on, on the road, but we've covered a lot of distance. Yeah. So, Colin, you were a bit uh, unsure about whether a mountain bike was right for this trip. What would you say now you've done it? I'm pleased I used the mountain bike rather than my other one because it's yeah. been ideal in certain places where it was sandy and a little bit gravelly yeah i think it fitted in well i think i would it recommend did. using me personally a mountain bike yeah i would agree with you i'd i'd be happy to do it on a mountain bike i mean having said that you're a strong rider which uh, we can all see because most of these shots you were out in front <laughs> but, <laughs> sorry uh, about that but i think no i i, th I think a mountain bike or if you're on an e-bike, a large tired e-bike would be reasonable. But the suspension has made a lot of difference for you. And the, the wide tyres, the yeah. suspension, it, it all helps. Yeah. But it's been good. Yeah. The only disappointing part about the ride was I wanted to do the loop at the bottom, but Ian wouldn't let me. Yeah. Well, I suppose he chickened out, didn't he? Lightweight. What would I let him do? We were, we were just saying that he wanted to do the Witchell Sea loop. We, we all wanted to do it, didn't we? Yeah, but we all you, did. But you didn't. Uh, <laughs> Lightweight. Yeah. No, we took the wrong turn in. We went right instead of left. <laughs> well, isn't that a beautiful scene? I'm actually in Belton Park today. I'm just doing a ride recce for a ride we have on Saturday. And I just thought I'd use the opportunity to do a a quick debrief on the ride you've just seen. It was a bit different to how we normally do it, but I thought I'd give you an overview. There's so much to see on that route that obviously I couldn't show you everything. So I've added the links there so that you can look up places of interest. So what did I think of the route? Well, I think first of all, Cycling UK should be commended for putting the route together. I think it's a great asset. But I think there are some elements that do need to be revised. I'm guessing things have changed a little bit since they first put the route together. So what I intend to do in this summary is just point out some areas that I think need to be changed. Firstly, that sandy track through the golf course, there was really no need for that. I think it's just there for the sake of it. Um, okay, it's nice to be off road, but you couldn't ride on it. Uh, even. Colin with his mountain bike struggled a little bit I think. Now you may recall that I put a caption up as we crossed a second golf course. This was slightly different because although it was a good surface we were actually traversing the fairways. Now fortunately there was nobody playing that day but had there been we would have had to have been very careful and I'm sure the golfers are careful too that would have been thought about. But then we went on to a track that narrowed and you couldn't actually push your bike along it because it was so narrow. Uh, it was also being infiltrated by some rather nasty brambles. Um, we actually got carved up on our arms going through it. So what I would say is, although that track is fine and it was very, very nice down there, it's not ideal for cycling down. 
And if that's going to stay as part of the route, then it does need to be managed. So I've made some changes to the route. Uh, and these are just based on what I would do if I was doing it again. And that includes a diversion on the west side of Folkestone. Uh, so, in other words, instead of going across that golf course, we would go down some very minor roads uh, and it looks doable. But what I would say is that is just the route that I would do, not the route I'm suggesting anyone else does. But if you want to look at that route, I'll put a link to a GPX file so that you can have a look. Bike wise, I would say certainly mountain bike would be a great bike to do it on, as Colin showed. Uh, Gravel bike, fine, it was no problem. Uh, you need some pretty decent tyres because there are some quite flinty patches at the beginning of the ride. But certainly any bike with fairly large volume tyres is going to be ideal for this, I would say. Now I've heard people say there are no hills. Well, it depends on what you consider to be hills. There are a couple of fairly long climbs. They're doable and if you take your time, you'll be fine. But I certainly wouldn't say it's a flat route. The other thing with being a coastal route as well, you can be affected by the wind and that's going to be as draining as some of the long hills. Another aspect is the time it will take you. It's not like road riding where you can get a fairly good average speed. I mean, I think we were averaging something like about eight or nine miles an hour, partly because we were stopping a lot, but also you're on tracks, you, you go through gates, you're getting off and so on. So it, it will be slower. And I would say to do 50 miles, you're going to need a decent day. That's if you're going to take time to look at things as well. In terms of the overall ride time, we took three and a half days, which worked for us. That ride from the start at Y over to Canterbury it ended up about 14 miles. And that was just nice to get us into the mood. And then we had virtually three full days. The last day, I think we got back about up as to three o'clock to the car park. We then had a three and a half hour drive home. But I would say if you want to enjoy the ride, look at some of the sights there, I'd give yourself five days. One other aspect I would suggest you look at carefully is accommodation. Now, clearly if you're bike packing, that's a different thing. But we are all of an age where we prefer our comforts. So we booked into hotels. We did find it very, very difficult. Apart from the Premier Inn, where bikes are always welcome to be taken into your rooms, there's no problem there. We did find finding reasonable priced accommodation to be very, very difficult. The places we stayed in were okay. They were acceptable. I certainly wouldn't want to stay in them for more than one night, personally. Uh, but they were acceptable and the price was about right. Another recommendation would be that whereas we stayed in Sandwich for the night, if you went a bit further on, you'd get to Deal. And I think, excuse the pun, but there's a great deal more accommodation to be had, particularly off season. So thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, by all means, make a comment below and I'll try and answer your questions. And if you felt this video was worthy of a like, please take the time to hit the like button because it does help me. And also bear in mind that to subscribe is absolutely free. So until next time, I'll say goodbye and I look forward to you joining me again.